Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting games that I played against the Stockfish AI level 6. It is rated around 2300 on Lee Chess. I am around 1900, 1950 across all formats, uh, including Bullet Blitz and Rapid. And this was an interesting game that I played the London system and managed to defeat the Stockfish, which is around 350 higher rated than me on Lee Chess. Now, before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game. I played the London system as I uh, told earlier. So pawn to d4, uh, Stockfish responds with d5. I play bishop to f4 and it responds with e6. Now knight to f3, standard moves. He tries to exchange the the dark square bishop which i deny and place it back on g3 the idea behind not giving the bishop is always that if the opponent takes you can simply take back with the h file and the h file gets opened up for the attack where the opponent will be castling sooner than later now uh, stockfish of course understands that and plays the move knight to d7 i respond with e3 uh, trying to complete my setup of the london system now uh, it plays knight to f6. I develop the light square bishop finally on uh, d3. Here queen comes to e7. Now uh, I probably was expecting to uh, to castle first, but it went. It was delaying castling, maybe trying to see which side I'm attacking and then castle. So I played the knight to e5, e5 now. Uh, the very good square for the knight on, in the London system. It controls a lot of stuff. Uh, of course, I can capture on the knight anytime. But the threat is always that when you are playing, especially against humans, you will see errors like uh, the knight will be captured with the knight and then you can probably take with the pawn and fork both the pieces. So that's one of the tricks in the London system, which you can often see against uh, especially weaker opponents. But of course, it was against an engine. So uh, engines don't do such mistakes at 2300 level. It's, it played h5 as probably my next move would have been h4 otherwise. So I responded with h4 and as you can see in the evaluation, uh, black is slight ahead uh, as of now. So it takes on the knight finally with the bishop. I take back with the pawn and now it brings knight on g4 which is pretty solid now. I cannot take it uh, with the queen. It's guarded with the pawn and it will be tough to remove it from here. Or I can just probably bring my pawn back and then try to take it. But if, if I bring my bishop backwards, uh, it's simple for Stockfish to just take on the pawn first. So uh, in this kind of a situation where the pawn has two, attacker, um, two attackers and got only one defender, it's very tough. Uh, one move just to add on to the defender was playing f4 but then it loses the pawn on e3 uh, with the knight. So a tricky situation. So I just went on with development. So pawn to uh, c3 here. It takes with the uh, knight. I take the knight, he takes back. And now uh, queen to a4 here. Yeah, I could have developed my bishop first and saved it, but I thought of going with the queen. And it responds with uh, c6. And I bring the queen to the center file, which is a d file. And it's on d4 now, defending the bishop as well. And computers don't prefer exchanging stuff that easy. So of course, it did take. Rather, just move the queen uh, onto d6. Here, I brought back the bishop now, trying to make sure that if somehow I can capture on h5 later on, uh, that would be helpful. And Stockfish takes the knight back. Oh, I, the, I could have captured the pawn maybe up. I was, uh, why didn't I capture the spawn? I'm just still wondering if I take that, that looks a natural move. And there's no threat as well. Yes, Stockfish will play e5, but that is completely fine. I missed the move there. Uh, I was focused towards uh, maybe some getting this knight off the board. So I bring back the bishop now on d d3 again. 
it castles and I take on the knight. Uh, and here, that was again a good move by the stockfish uh, playing e5 here. That also makes a, a uh, the rank empty for the queen to attack the bishop. And now the bishop can be taken with the queen rather than spoiling its pawn structure. So I just move the queen backwards on um, d3 here with the idea that if it captures with the queen, I can exchange. And that's what happened in the game. It took with the queen and it took, took back. And now it takes on the queen. Of course, it has to. It has got double pawns, uh, but piecewise, we are like uh, equal. Uh, it has got extra pawn there in the center. And I have a knight. So I'm in disadvantage for sure. But these double pawns gave me some hope. So I developed my last minor piece remaining, which was the knight to d2. It responds with bishop um, on, on e6. And I take the knight further up to f3. Here it responds with pawn to e4. And now I take my knight. Uh, so I had a couple of moves for the knight. I was thinking at that point of time to place on e5 or g5. Uh, at the end, I chose g5. e5 also looked uh, good enough to me, actually. But um, I was in that case thinking that uh, the bishop probably would go uh, back, maybe offering me the bishop because it has to defend the pawn. That was what I was thinking. And from there, again, a knight doesn't have a very good square actually going forward to. It's just standing there and not doing much. Plus, it gets uh, gives it a chance to align his rooks by moving rook to uh, f6 first and then the other rook on f8. And then a deadly attack is coming on the f2. So uh, I rather chose to play uh, knight on g5, attacking the bishop as well. Uh, and here it plays bishop on f5. That, uh, of course, saves the pawn, but also ensures that now the attack will not come on the f file. And due to that, I could castle. And that was probably the right move. What is computer suggesting? It's suggesting you could have played a4, but I wanted to first castle to safety. Now it tries to get the rooks on the center file, which is semi-open. So I just place my rook in front of the rook. Now it tries to just uh, attack the rook with the bishop. Also, bishop is pretty solid here. Uh, nothing wrong going to happen there. So uh, that's a good move. I just uh, play rook to d2 here. Now it tries to get the other rook as well in the center file. And now I played a4 finally. Uh, remember, I'm a pawn down, so I have to cover up for that. So that was the whole idea I was running behind. So I played uh, b3 first. And then it plays pawn to b6. And then I play b4, uh, asking it to capture. Uh, it plays bishop to f5. And I take on the pawn. It takes back. And now I can take control of the open file. That was important. Um, open files should be taken care of, and that's what I tried to do here. Now, and it just retrieves its bishop back uh, on the d7, not asking for rook exchange, but that gave me space to get my rook on an active rank, which was the seventh rank. So, rook to b7. And now it plays uh, king to f8. Now, of course, my knight isn't doing much over here. If you see, but it's controlling the pawns uh, and not letting it move forward. Of course, he, it has got light square bishop, so it cannot take the knight away from, from here. Uh, so eventually, if you have to remove this knight from here, you have to give away one of your rooks. So that was the whole point of planting the knight here. It would be very much controllable there. And I now play uh, rook on the a7 with the idea of capturing the pawn. Uh, Stockfish plays king to e7 here. I take on the pawn. It gives a rook for exchange. So I took it. Takes back. And I now defend the uh, a4 pawn. Now, this pawn again is very critical to be promoted if I have to somehow win from here. Though it looks very tough. But yep, I have to just hold on to this pawn. 
uh, now that I have taken the extra pawn away from the game, we have equal amount of pawns. And uh, and the worst thing about Stockfish here is probably it has got double pawns. But it had Bishop, which is, of course, very much uh, a very good piece at the end game. It can control uh, the queen uh, promotion as well because... Uh, it is a light square where this uh, pawn is going to end. So that's why computer testing it's 0, 0.0, which means a draw from here if both of us play perfectly fine. So at any point of time, the bishop can just come on uh, to this entire diagonal anywhere and then just control the light square uh, just to stop me from promoting the queen. And that's what probably it started to do very quickly, just making sure that the bishop is going on uh, c8 and then probably to b7 and control the light squares so i tried to just uh, break up the position open from the king side now uh, that so that i can just probably release some pressure because he has got three pawns here i've got two so i need to defend these so just try to make sure that pawn chain is broken by playing f3 and it now plays uh, bishop on b6 that stops, of course, my pawn's way as well as controlling diagonal. So I cannot move the pawn forward as well. So I played a5 here with the idea of just putting my pawns on dark square so that in any point of time, if I have to move the rook away from here, uh, at least uh, the pawn will not be taken up by the bishop. Now it takes the pawn, uh, I take back. I've got connected pawns, which is good. Um, so probably these two pawns can now be controlled uh, with a couple of pawns here. Uh, so the pawn on f file is some something I'm looking forward to. Maybe in some future, uh, some point of time, I can capture uh, the pawn on g7 with the knight and then proceed. Now, pro probably Stockfish saw that, that I would be eyeing the g7, so it moved rook to uh, a7 already. And then I started moving my king towards the center. Just theoretical rules. Uh, always place your king in the center and try to win the opposition and just try to keep going towards the center of the board and try take control of things. You cannot just win with a couple of pieces and equal number of pawns here. So you have to make sure you're using your king actively. And now uh, it played knight to d6. Of course, uh, e6 was controlled by the knight uh, and so was f6 so the only way to go forward towards the center probably it chose to by going d6 i played pawn to f4 here trying to make sure that now the king has got um, the active squares so it, that's the way you should look at things if the king is already in the center if you see it has got just a couple of places to go uh, if it has to move ahead and how can you make sure that it only goes to one path? And that is by blocking one of them. That's what I did in the game. Uh, played f5, making sure it cannot come on the e5 so that at least uh, the part of the board is controlled by my pieces very well. And once it the king goes away from here, I can probably make use of my inactive knight as well. So now king was forced to go on the c5. And I started making use of my knight. Uh, probably not um, the ideal square as computer suggesting that you can go on uh, the f3 but my idea was just to give a check and probably come back on the center which is uh, d4 it plays king to now uh, b5 i give a check with the knight and now king goes back uh, to c5 of course my knight is guarded with the pawn so nothing to be worried about i just tried to make see if computer is willing for a draw so i moved uh, knight to e6 here but uh, it played uh, c4 here so now my pawn is under attack and what should i be doing uh, i can i defend this uh, yes i can by just moving uh, rook to probably a3 but then next move is uh, king on b3 which loses the pawn for sure because i would have to save the uh, rook there can i save this pawn with my king nope i can't in the next move so when you can't save a piece probably go for a thing that you can attack and the opponent can also not save and that's what i did uh, by moving the knight on d4 the idea is if you take my pawn i'll take yours simple 
so that we are material wise equal and that would also attack the rook and probably if rook goes away from the rank i can somehow probably just play maybe uh, the next move could have been from there to uh, e5 as well forking uh, the rook as was the pawn on g6 and that that should be winning so i played uh, d4 here and computer understands the impact of that so it doesn't take on my pawn on uh, c3 but rather chose to move bishop first now the bishop is guarding the pawn here so have to be a bit careful here i chose to now defend the rook uh, the pawn with the rook uh, the idea is now of course king cannot come here uh, and uh, the the square on the b4 is already guarded with the pawn so the king is pretty much uh, forced to either go back on c5 or maybe uh, d3 here which is not really active square for the king and there can be some tricks here which the king can be trapped by getting the rook as well so it just tried to move his rook backwards on the a8 here i tried to take my king closer uh, to the opponent's king and it brings back the rook i got my king on d2 now the idea was now at least the pawn is guarded with the king as well so uh, the king is pretty much good over here uh, and now i can probably move my knight or even the rook if required so now it plays pawn to c5 and i have to save my knight of course so i took my knight on uh, the b3 rather computer is saying that you can go on the other side of the board uh, but i didn't see a follow up from here uh, let's see what computer is suggesting the best moves okay now i can probably attack on the pawn and it's a check as well so as soon as it moves i can get to take a pawn or the bishop it's a choice of course i'll take a free pawn and that's the wrong thing you should take the bishop is no not even take the bishop get the rook on the b file oh these computer lines are very tricky what is it trying to achieve here let's just see even computer is confused okay pawn over here of course it cannot take if it can take actually but that probably loses up the bishop first okay so it cannot take and if sorry if the bishop comes back and defends the pawn what's the follow up here attack the rook and that defends the pawn as well rook goes there what's happening in this game i am seriously not able to understand how about rook to b7 here yeah that's a good move then you can probably dislodge the pawns from back rank and then that's winning so oh that was a tricky line and very complicated one let's go back to the game where uh, i played uh, uh, the knight to b3 and computer plays here uh, bishop uh, to c6 i just moved my king there was not uh, a very good move that i saw plus uh, after i moved the king the idea is that the knight can now come back and attack the king as well probably it saw that and moved king to b5 already i just went ahead uh, by moving the king here on the b2 with the idea that the light square bishop uh, can somehow give a check at some point of time maybe from uh, from e4 uh, e4 or uh, f5 so i just wanted to keep my king on the dark squares knight plays uh, rook to a6 i would say a passive move but then i just got back my king uh, from there just making sure that if it wants to draw so i was just trying to repeat uh, and here it chose to break the repetition so computer is actually looking forward to a win uh, just anticipating some human errors i believe so it brings back the bishop on a8 i got back the king on c2 and now it plays rook to a6 i just got it back i just i'm not trying to move the things uh, i'm letting computer think that what you want to do from here and uh i am i was pretty much amazed by this move then uh, rook to e6 now it's attacking the pawn and how can i save it again uh, i can't save it so i'll offer him something else in in for it uh, and that was a pawn which it took with the pawn and now uh, knight back on d2 at attacking the pawn 
uh, and also saving the spawn uh, with the rook. So that was the idea behind giving away one pawn, but this pawn was more important. I wanted to make, make sure these connected pawns are there. Now it responds with king to b4. And I just tried to stop the pawns from moving forward to c3. Of course, if you just try to move some other move here, suppose king, uh, the next move is very uh, lethal for white and it's completely losing. So I just uh, stopped that pawn from moving forward. And now there's double attack on the pawn. Uh, if it wants to save, probably the only move is bishop uh, over to d5. But it didn't play that. Why didn't it play? Uh, what if bishop to d5 is played? Oh, I can just kick away the bishop from here. Simple. And if it now takes, it's going to lose. Oh, it's going to lose a piece by first giving a check. After it takes the pawn, you can just simply probably take the rook and exchange the rooks. And you are a piece up. And that's completely winning. Another interesting line that could have happened. Uh, so in human games, of course, you will see that happening, but uh, it didn't uh, defend the pawn. So I took it with the rook. It takes my a pawn, uh, which I was hoping to promote, but now it cannot be done. Here I uh, just capture another pawn, uh, making sure that I'm at least material wise equal. So I giving a check as well with the rook. It just saves uh, the king over there. I brought back my rook on uh, c3. It tries to break open the position, but that's not very helpful. I take back with the b f4 to g5. Now, uh, these two pawns are pretty much uh, in control with my pawns. So the only way to break for black here is to take on the h4. So that was critical. Uh, always make sure your base of the pawn chain is controlled and safe. Uh, here it moves bishop now to c6 and I gave a check with the knight uh, by playing knight to uh, c4. It just moves the king to c5 and now a knight on a5 with the idea of capturing the pawn, capturing the bishop, but rather it uh, just gave away the, it saved, it saved the king from the check because it was a discover attack on the king and I take on the bishop and we exchanged all the pieces remaining on the board. Now it's an end game and end game with the extra pawn with me. So probably I should win this. But again, Stockfish was pretty cl clever at the end as well, trying to uh, force some mistakes and turn it out into a draw. But I eventually did it uh, just trying to centralize the king and make sure the pawn is advancing so king first and now i cannot move ahead with the king so pawn here uh, and of course if i play pawn here uh, uh, to e6 um, the king comes on uh, d6 and probably i'm losing from there so just try to stick with the pawn and now Computer also plays uh, g6. The idea is I I cannot go in from the other side of the board. So stopping the king movement. So I get back to d4. Now king c7. I just move ahead with the king whenever you get chance. You, uh, all you need to do in end games is make sure your king is ahead of your pawn and not behind. Uh, once your king is ahead of the pawn, you are definitely going to win it. And now pawn to e6. It goes to the last rank. Uh, now, this is very tricky. If if I just place my king forward, uh, it can also take move back the king. And now you have to be careful here. If you are just too early to just pr probably promote your uh, queen here, it can just come back and then it be can become a draw very quickly. Because if you just see uh, king to e6 is draw. So that can be a tricky thing. So just try not to be in a rush when you are trying to mate. So just try to go around from every possible way and delay stuff. Uh, and I gave it space to just come closer. It didn't. Uh, I just kept moving uh, separately. Finally, trying to uh, go to e5. And after it 
just now it, it's a it's a uh, move by the stockfish it has to move away and give away uh, the center uh, the the control of the seventh rank so i took on the control of seventh rank and then moved towards the other side of the board now uh, i'm not even looking forward to promote this pawn i'm looking forward to capturing the pawn and then probably i will have three pawns and i'll win it from there so that's what i tried to do go back to the game uh, now it understands that it's impossible, so it goes back. I just play king to f7, making sure queen is being promoted to. And I got a queen in the board. And then just captured the pawn. And then another queen in the making. It can just roam around trying to save for some moves. I just got the queen, it's mate in two, and now finally checkmate. So yeah, uh, defeating computer is always nice. Uh, it was my first time of defeating Stockfish AI level six, uh, 2300 rated. And I did it with the London system. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on that, I'm placing the link in the description below so that you can check that out and learn it uh, and experience that because I believe it's very, very good opening from white and you take control of things straight away. I hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know your feedback. I would love to improve from here on and I'm, I hope there's something to be learned, some small, small things in between uh, connected pawns, uh, rooks on the empty file, rook in front of the rook, uh, things like those which can be handy when you are playing uh, against your opponents. So thank you so much for your time and keep watching and sharing. Do press on the subscription button and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.